Gaur Govinda Maharaj, some devotees went on their own flank and they've made their own system and they say that this is a pure devotee and they worship in him. Uh, yet, he is a con- yet he has a lot of contradictions in what he says. He's basically repeating Srila Prabhupada and um, he says that uh, one cannot get transcendental knowledge of the Vyagyan from you know, books and from audio, from listening. But meanwhile, his own disciples promote his books and promote his audio lectures and say that he is, you know, so that's like a little bit of, um, well, that is hypocritical. Um, but he was formerly a uh, guru in the, with the GBC, or appointed from the GBC. And then he got kicked out, if I'm not mistaken, because of his own propaganda that he had happening. I don't know mm-hmm. if any one of the disciples can comment on that. Uh, Yashoda could give us uh, further insight, please. Well, I just want to make a correction. He was never kicked out. He was allowed to stay in an ISKCON because he got his license or his vote from the very same people that he was criticizing. Okay. Now, we met this Gaur Govinda, Puranjan and myself, in 1993 in Badger, California. And Puranjan explained to him that this whole idea of guru appointment was never done by Prabhupada. There's no proof for it. There's no evidence for this idea that Prabhupada appointed some, one successor or a group of successor or a group of Diksha gurus. He admitted that was correct. As part of these discussions, he admitted, this is quite significant, that the personality of Kali has infiltrated the highest positions in ISKCON. He was at odd with all these people. He was often preaching that these people are deviating and this and that. The problem with him is that he went on preaching this living guru idea like this, that you cannot get spiritual knowledge by listening to tapes of Srila Prabhupada. You have to have a living, physically present guru. Well, this is nice and good, but now his followers, now that he's departed, people are promoting his tapes. So exactly. when people brought up all these quotes from Srila Prabhupada, that Prabhupada says the Guru is always present in his instruction, Vani is more important than Vapu, he lives right. forever by his divine instruction and the follower lives with him, that went into one ear and went out the other because he was basically promoting the same nonsense living Guru philosophy that the GBC is promoting, minimizing Srila Prabhupada and emphasizing themselves. So there has been a lot of exchanges with this Gaur Govinda by numerous devotees challenging him over this nonsense idea that you cannot make spiritual advancement by listening to Prophet's tape, which is an idea that we do not accept. We do not accept this nonsensical idea. I'm sure Paranjan can speak on that if he has some time. Well, a lot of people don't remember this or realize this, but uh, the very last thing Gaur Govinda was doing, just before he departed, he he made a public announcement that he was going to challenge the GBC over the Jibatatva issue. He was going to prove that we did not fall from Vaikuntha. He was going to prove that Prabhupada is bogus and all the rest of it. And he was and he, and he clearly supported Narayan. He in fact said. Narayan and Sridhar are correct. We do not fall from Vaikuntha. So he made a series. It's on, it's on YouTube. You can see it mm. where he's talking. And he's saying over and over, we do not fall from Vaikuntha. And, that is, and anyone who says that is bogus. Well, Prabhupada says that. Yes. So, so then what happened? He said... I am going to get a group of the Brahmins, the local Brahmins in Mayapur, to, to make a public protest in front of the Mayapur temple. We're going to protest this idea that you come from Vaikuntha. Of course, <laughs> the local Brahmins are, are Mayavadis. So, yeah, they're going to support him. So, then he mysteriously departed at that time. Just at that exact time that he made that challenge, he departed. Now, some people think his departure was not an accident because he was just sitting up and his head just drooped over. And, you know, know, so so his followers wrote me right away and they said, we think he was poisoned. And 
you know, they wanted to investigate it. I said, well, you got to get his body. They said, well, we'll drive Taka people already moved his body. And they moved his body to a sewer. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, they buried his body in a sewer. So the the city had already said, we're going to dig this up. We've got to put a new pipe in here. The pipe is leaking. But they, the pipe was leaking for years. They knew that. They dug up the sewer spot, spot and put him in the sewer. Hmm. And I made a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, <laughs> talk about that on my blog about how he was buried, where the pigs are. You know, go to eat and everything else. The pigs go to eat stool, and he, they, that's where they put his. That's what they. But if you put a body in a sewer, then you're going to make it very difficult to analyze was this body poisoned, yes or no, because it's going to be full of toxic materials. So I think exactly. they did that on purpose. 